Two years ago, on this very day, the 31st of August 2019, the motorsport world came to a standstill. Antoine Hubert, a French F2 driver and one of the stars of the season, had died in a horrific accident at Spa. In that crash, another driver was badly injured and nearly died as a result of it. That driver was Juan Manuel Correa, and today I'm going to dedicate this video to a man that we should all see as an absolute hero of not just motorsport, but in life. This is the story of Juan Manuel Correa, the best I could tell it. Juan Manuel Correa, or JMC, was born on August 9th, 1999 in Ecuador's capital city of Quito and began karting professionally at the age of eight, mainly competing in his homeland and also the United States of America. His results over the years were fairly impressive, with the highlight being the World Championship in the Rotax Max Junior class, where he beat the likes of Brandy Joe and Prince Ferdinand of Austria. He then moved over to Europe and achieved 5th place in his first season in the senior class of the European Championships, besting future academy drivers like Yuri Vips and Marcus Armstrong there as well. For 2016, JM decided that it was time to go into single-seaters, competing in the Italian and German F4 Championships with the Premier Power team, partnering Mick Schumacher and the aforementioned Vips. His rookie season was quite inconsistent, but he did demonstrate his ability with three race wins at Imola, Mugello and Vallelunga in the Italian Championship, where Correa ended up 6th and only one position behind Vips, whilst he only had one podium and finished 10th in the German series. So overall, that's not too bad a start. He was expecting to lead the team to the ADAC F4 title the following season with a storming performance, but as the season progressed, Correa found himself a long way behind his teammates. Then came an opportunity to save himself from total disaster, however, when Genza found a third GP3 car in their garage and handed the keys of it to Juan Manuel for the rest of the GP3 season. Oh boy! Correa initially struggled to adapt to the car given by the Swiss, and that crash at Monza didn't help matters if we're being honest. He finished the season second from bottom in the standings, but to be fair he was being thrown in at the deep end here. Next year would give Correa a chance to improve his results, as he once again stayed with Genza, partnering Tata Calderon and, at least in the first half of the season, David Beckman. By the way, if you're liking this so far, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you! Correa's season started in a positive way, scoring points in the first three races and, at the time, beating his vastly more experienced German teammate. But after four rounds, Beckman left the team for Trident, and the gap in performance between them and Genza became abundantly clear, as Beckman won three races, whilst Correa didn't so much as finish on the podium. There, it has to be stressed yet again that, even with the same cars, the teams are not all on the same level. 12th in the championship for Correa was pretty much the best he could have done. So, for the 2019 season, JM progressed to the Formula 2 championship along with pretty much half of the GP3 grid. He would drive with Callum Arlott at Chirouz and, as part of that deal, would join the Sauber junior team, giving him a chance to maybe have a shot at F1 in the future. The first weekend would be a bit of a rude awakening for the pair, as both, and pardon my French, qualified and raced like shit. Qualifying for the next round in Baku didn't go to plan either, but in the ensuing chaos in race 1, Correa climbed his way up to 7th, securing him a front row start for the sprint race. He would be overtaken by some experienced pensioner, but valiantly held on to second place against Jack Aitken, scoring his and Chirouza's first podium of the year. The next two rounds at Barcelona and Monaco weren't particularly memorable, save for this crash, but in the next round in France, Correa would once again finish seventh in the feature race, and then manage the sprint race carefully to finish second, putting himself back in front of his teammate in the standings. Tragically, the winner of this race was Antoine Hubert, which meant that Juan Manuel witnessed Hubert's last ever victory celebration in person. If you're not crying already, you're lying. For Correa, Austria didn't yield any points, and neither did Silverstone and Budapest. He did however get the chance to drive in the 2013 Sauber F1 car in a test one week before the Belgian Grand Prix weekend, fulfilling a lifelong dream of his. This joy was tragically cut short at Spa. Correa was going up Eau Rouge on the second lap of the feature race, as debris got stuck underneath his car. And we all know what happened next. The crash that claimed Antoine Hubert's life caused fractures to Juan Manuel's legs and a condition known as acute respiratory distress syndrome. 
He was put into an induced coma for two weeks, and soon after his reconstructive surgery to save as much of his right leg as possible. The procedure was a success, although it also meant that JM would have to recover for more than a year. But most importantly, he survived. Pereira kept himself busy with a specially adapted sim rig, and, with time, regained the use of his right leg. Then, on the 1st of February 2021, the motorsport world was in for an upset. Juan Manuel Correa would be returning to racing. It was, and still is, a monumental achievement. And although the Sauber Jr. isn't lighting up the F3 Championship with ART right now, he shouldn't really be judged by this season. He's rumoured to go to one of either Indy Lights or F2 next year, and, whatever he does, Juan Manuel will be a fantastic asset to every race, team, and series that he goes to. He is a warrior in every sense of the word, and such an iffy little video could never do JMC justice. As far as I'm concerned, Juan Manuel Correa is not only a hero, but is currently fighting through one of the most impressive comebacks in racing history. And with that, I'll wish him all the best. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.